this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at putting um, a current meter in line with the laser tube. So, I want to start out talking a little bit about the laser tube, but first I want to talk about safety. So, this is a high voltage device. So, on this end of the tube, it was 15 to 20,000 volts when energized. And while it's low current, um, it is enough current to arrest your heart and obviously if your heart is arrested you die so this has to be performed with a lot of caution and I'm not showing you how to do this in this video I'm simply just talking about how I did it so uh, if you decide to do it you're doing it on your own and you need to take proper safety precautions for example you know number one needs to be unplugged number two I would suggest leaving it sit overnight to make sure everything is discharged properly. And even then, it does not mean that this high voltage is discharged, so you should address this properly. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into all the details, but, you know, just because, again, I've worked with high voltage uh, quite a bit of my life, so I understand a little bit about the dynamics and how to deal with it. So one of the things you want to do is, number one, keep your left hand away from there. Number two, you do not want to have your hands in situations where you can create a circuit which runs through your hands because obviously that's going to run through your heart and it's going to stop your heart and again, you're going to die. So one of the big things you want to do is, is if, if you are going to deal with high voltage, and again, I'm only documenting this, this is not educational or suggestion, is, is, is work with your right hand because it is furthest from your heart and it, it cr stops from creating the circuit, as I mentioned, through there. So uh, also, um, always when I work with electronics, even low voltage, I don't take a chance. I always wear rubber sole shoes, and many times I have rubber mats in my uh, work area uh, to separate me from ground, because the biggest thing you do not want to do in a high voltage situation is get between, your, between ground and a high voltage situation, because that will pass through you. Okay, now that I've uh, been done lecturing about safety, um, I want to talk a little bit about how the tube works. So, uh, again, th this is a laser tube, and what's in here is a flash tube, and it works a lot like the flash in your camera does, in, in that a high voltage charge excites usually some, some form of gas inside the tube, uh, and that gas radiates photons, which, you know, therefore become lasered in the tube. The only difference between this and your camera, la your camera strobe is that in your camera strobe, it charges up a capacitor to high voltage, discharges it in a very short period of time, makes a big flash. This discharges continually through a high voltage flyback power supply to this tube and runs the tube continuously. So think of it like your flash just going off continually and not not going off. This is one of the reasons that this tube has to be water cooled is it generates, a, the flash generates a lot of heat obviously and so that needs to be carried away by the water. Now what happens when the light is created from the flash tube is it's lasered by the CO2 gas inside the, the, the cylinder and in the back here, there's a mirror, and then there's a semi-permeable mirror here. So what happens is the photons bounce back and forth in a highly energetic state until they all coalesce into, uh, in, in short, one frequency, one direction, and then they exit the, the semi-permeable mirror on this side, hit this mirror, and the, the rest is history. This is how the laser tube works. Now, to create this strobe effect, uh, or continue, continue strobe effect, on this end, you have a large red wire, and this is your anode. And on this side, you have a small, at least in my case, a yellow wire, which is the cathode. And so this is basically ground, this is basically hot. Now what happens is the, the current flows in from the anode side, and the electrons flow in from the cathode side. So in short, what happens is this creates a big sucking which pulls this in. So uh, again, what happens when the arc is, it wants to pull the electrons towards the anode. And again, I've got this powered off and, and discharged, so I'm, I'm primarily keeping my hand here, which I would not recommend uh, because I know it, it, it's safe at this point in time. 
um, and, and I'm trying to accentuate the locations of where some of these things are. So now to, to insert the amp meter, or the current meter, because it's only going to read micro milliamps, is it's going to go between the cathode and its connection in the power supply. And because long story short, we, the, the cathode is basically a ground connection. When we get over to the power supply, we're going to take a little bit of a look at this. So uh, again, I can't emphasize caution enough, and again, I'm just sharing... Um, you know how I'm doing this so uh, let's go over to the power supply side okay so we're over here on the power supply side I've got the door opened up unfortunately I, I have the digital version that doesn't have the other flip up door like the the analog versions do and this is part of the reason that I wanna I wanna put a current meter on here is in short I get sort of a percentage reading that goes roughly you know from 0 to 99.9 .9 over here and it really is not indicative of to what really power is coming out of the tube now again I, I've, I've unplugged the machine it's been discharged it's grounded etc and so I've up on the power supply because it's kind of difficult to see in there I've removed this which is a little uh, block which plugs into the power supply and I've already removed the the cathode wire so here it is now one of the things I had discovered about this is my cathode wire was actually wrapped tightly around the anode wire because as you can see the anode wire is in here it's this heavy red wire that's running into the power supply that should not be while this is well insulated um, there there would still be probably a dielectric exchange between these two so just not good even if there wasn't um, it's not good, so I've, I, I, I'm separating that out. I've un untangled it. And so the other yellow wire here is actually ground, because what I'm going to do is I've got my my meter here, my trusty craftsman meter. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I want to take, I want to take this, I'm going to hold, hold this. So I got this other yellow wire, and here's my ground lug. And I'm going to touch the two, and you hear the beep, and you see, see, I have a ground. So, long story short, this plugged into this side of this block, and, and so, in short, as I mentioned, it it it, it goes to ground. Now, uh, again, don't mess with this. So it goes back to where it came from, uh, even though it is ground. So don't get any wild ideas. Um, so what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to take, I've taken this length of connector wire and I'm going to connect it to this plug back where that was. I'm going to take my little screwdriver here and just tighten it down on there. So now, now this is tightened down on there so now I got this. Now what I'm going to do and I'm gonna I'm gonna go off cam because I kind of got to crawl. It's it's weird how you got to get at it up underneath there. I'm gonna go plug this back in, and then I'm gonna show you how to connect it up to the meter. So um, let's cut over there. Okay, so we're back, and I've hooked things up. So I reconnected the power block inside. I put the cover back on and ran the wires through for safety purposes. Um, I've used alligator clips to jumper this and cover as much of the um, probe as I can and so one of the things as you notice and this this is what's important is again the black wire remember runs to the power block on the power supply the yellow wire runs to the laser tube so I've connected the black the black wire running to the power block to the, to the black here to the negative here while I've connected the laser tube to the positive, so it's important. Now, I've got, is, is I hope you can see here, so I had to switch meters because for some reason the Craftsman wasn't working, but this, this one, this GB is working for this. Um, so I've got it set to, to DC milliampers. Uh, I actually wanted to try the other one because, well, it does, this one does read to 200 milliampers. Um, so I've got it set to 20 milliampers because that should be the maximum that we run the tube at is, is 20 milliamps. So right now I'm going to set, so I've set my display over here to 50% and I'm going to hit the test button 
And so at 50 percent, I'm yielding about 14, about 14 milliwatts. So I'm going to kick it up to 60 percent. And 60 percent, I'm running at about a little short of 16. So I'm going to kick it up to 17 or 70 percent, sorry, and I'm running at about 17 milliamps. Now at 80, 80 I'm running just short of 19, so I'm getting up close to the limit, so I'm going to hit 90 and hit the button. And so I'm right at about the limit, so, so, so let's actually pop this up to 200 and then let's hit the so, so 90, I'm basically a little over the limit, so I actually I could probably bump, let's bump this down to 88. So 88, I'm basically 19.9. So let's bump it up to 89. And so 89, I'm at 20%. So when my gauge is reading 89, Oh, sorry, not 20%, 20 milliampers. So my gauge is 89. I know I'm at maximum. Now, for grins and giggles, let's put this, now we're going to shoot for 99. So as you see, I'm running a little bit about 22, about 22 milliampers. So a little bit over at 99. Now, I have to be honest. I mean, I paid 400 bucks for this thing. Wasn't a huge sum of money. Um... You know, so if, if if I burn it up, I guess so what? I don't run it at a heavy-duty cycle, um, so I do run it at the higher, but I do want, do want to kind of show how this all works and how you can measure it. Now, one of the things I've done is I've ordered uh, an analog um, current gauge, which I'm going to mount on here. I'm not sure where. Uh, and I've used the, the analog one versus some of the digital ones because... If you use a digital one, you have to use a DC to DC power buck to, to separate the power because you want to separate this from the power that's driving it. So I figured I'm just going to go with a manual one. It's got a shunt built in. Uh, I'm not going to go into the whole shunt thing right now, but there's a shunt built in here per se. And then, um, you know, so I just hook the wires up to that manual gauge like this and I'll be able to read it. And, and which, which is really good because one of the things is, is, is running this test. All right, so now... I'm holding the button down, and so I'm holding it over time. So it's holding pretty steady at 20, 21.9. But let's let's drop this down a few fold because I've I've got a piece of plastic in there that it's hitting against, and it kind of stinks because I don't have the fan running because I want you to be able to hear me. So now now if I hold it, look at look at some of the okay. So it's stabilized. However, one of the things look how long it took to stabilize and see see it again. So the power supply is dropping out. So, so this is really interesting to watch. You can really see the performance of your laser cutter through utilizing this. And again, you have to do this safely. This, this is relatively, it's not hugely dangerous if you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do this. Um, and again, this is not a how-to video. This is only a video on what I've done to to test my laser and how I've tested my laser. Um, so again, if I hit this, so what, one of the things I do want to see when I'm thinking about it before I end this video is, whoops, I want to bring, so I'm now at zero, zero, so nothing happens. Now I want to come up to 10%. And so at 10%, I'm base, I, I'm just, see, see, look at this. See this? This is what I'm getting at. So at 10%, you see it. You see the, the tube cycle down. The, the power supply, and I've noticed this, because if I cut light cardboard or paper, I've tried 10%, and it simply doesn't work at all, which it should to cut, because you can see this paper and cardboard sitting here, uh, or, or, or cardstock. It's not even cardboard. But when I use like 10, 10 to 12%, I get this, and okay, so there it's a little bit stable, but it drops out quite a bit. So let's pump, let's pop it up to 12 or so. But see, I'm holding the test button, and I was getting nothing there. See, I got the test button; it's firing nothing, and that's at 12% with my finger on the test button. 
here we go again. Now it's now it's firing. Now it dropped out. For some reason at the lower percentages it drops out. Okay, so now I'm up to 22% and you see I got I'm holding the button, the lights firing. Okay, now it's but see it drop out. It's dropping out. If I go up 31 lights firing. Now it's pretty steady. Once I get into the 30s, it, it pretty much stays. But below 30, the power supply seems to drop out. And that's actually one of the reasons I wanted to do this test. Because ever since I've had this below about high 20s, really, it, it, it doesn't do anything. And, and which is really crazy because if I go to cut this foam or light paper, I, I don't want a lot of power. I mean, it doesn't need a lot of power. My, my half watt laser diode will cut this stuff easily. So, but for some reason in the power supply of this mix, uh, it's not working and now I've confirmed it with this meter. And again, this, this was the reason I'm doing it. So if you're having similar, again, this might be stuff to take a look at to, to troubleshoot your problem. But again, be very, very careful with it. Um, is there anything else I wanted to cover out in this uh, video? So. Again, I'm going to be mounting a permanent uh, meter on here. I've just got this in here for the time being because I wanted to see how it would work and um, also what I was putting out because of that, that situation. So, anyways, hey, if you found this interesting, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. A lot more coming. Cheers. Click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.